South Africa, hey, are taking on India, A eh? In the first unofficial test, it's day one has completed, and South Africa were put into bat first and scored 343 for three at the close of play. Uh, a mixed feeling for me, because obviously I w- one of my favorites were in the side and didn't get to score runs, and that was Reynald Mantonda. Uh, I really hoped that he could kick on in this particular match. Of course, it's Bloemfontein, it's his home ground, but a duck from him and a duck from Sarah Irvia. But hats off must go to P- the captain, Peter Malan, for his 157 not out, recovering beautifully, because I think they were 14 for two at some stage. And at that stage, you're thinking, you know what? Uh, maybe South Africa in a spot of bother here. But no, Tony De Zorzi and Peter Malan batting excellently. Essentially for, for Tony De Zorzi, interesting that he came in at number four. It shows that he's very versatile. He's, he's an opener for VP Blitz normally. Sometimes it depends on um, on various aspects of different things. But he's a very versatile batter that can bat in the top four in his position. Personally, that's what I think. And then we have a 51 from Jason Smith. Now, we're going to talk about all of these performances in depth. I'm going to go to the live chat and check what you guys had to say as well. And we're going to get a teacher on the show because I need to get some SAA edu- um, India a education over here because I really need to know about some of their bowlers and how they bowled. It was a very flat wicket. Let's not kid ourselves over here. It was difficult bowling conditions for a team like India. So it was very really interesting that they... They put South Africa into bat first in Bloemfontein. But I don't know how much winning is on the mind over here when when it comes to this particular match. Uh, uh, it might be that they're trying to test everybody and, and see what they are capable of in the, in, the, in the most difficult conditions as possible, in the most difficult situation as possible. So uh, the bowlers are really going to get tested on this particular wicket. But let's get straight into today's video. I'm welcome to everybody that has joined us. We're going to go into quite the in-depth analysis on this day one. We're going to try to do the show every single day, obviously covering the entire test uh, match. And obviously when the Netherlands play, we will be doing reviews and previews as per usual, as you normally see on this channel. To the guys that are new to the channel and you guys have, don't know all of our prompts that we ask you to do, you need to obviously subscribe to Click Fanatics Magazine monthly. The link is in the description. You get every single issue 100% free straight to your inbox every single month. All back issues, access to all of that free too. But if you're new to this channel and you haven't watched and subscribed before, please subscribe to this channel. Please click that notification bell for all future videos as well. So without further ado, guys, let's get straight into today's content. I'm really excited about this particular one. Let's get straight into it. Good evening and welcome to Kick It Fanatics Magazine. This is your daily show and we're going to be chatting about the SAA versus India A. First unofficial test. I'm your host, Khalid Moeden. This is Aditya. This is Werner. And we're going to be chatting about everything that has to do with this particular match. We're going to try to analyze as much as we can. It's not much to analyze. Uh, ultimately, it's just two massive scores and... Uh, one player that is also on his way to maybe perhaps not cross our fingers, no uh, jinxes over here that he will go on to score a big score as well in Jason Smith. Now, guys, um, let's let's get get this going. Um, before Aditya, before you speak about India, I, I just want to start with South Africa first. Um, I, I was I'm very impressed with Peter, but it's something that I expect from him, especially on a Bloemfontein wicket. Uh, those are the wickets that he tends to really go big and he doesn't miss out of opportunities to score big when he can. I think that's something that youngsters need to learn from. When there's an opportunity for you to go big, go big and, and focus and try and get there. Be patient in your approach and and also there's no need for rushing, of course. Now, unfortunately, Sadal Iovia uh, lost his wicket for a duck as well as Reynald Fantunda. We would have obviously liked to see 
both of them score. Luckily, this is a test match. So hopefully we'll get to see, obviously, a second innings over here. Um, and uh, unless South Africa, like, do a crazy and pull India out and ask them to to bat again. <laughs> so, but I'm hoping it's going to be an equal match here where we get an opportunity. Or oh, they bat for two days, three days. You know, anything can happen. Two and a half days and then this is going to be end up in a draw instead of it ending it up into a proper contest. But either way, I would like to see everybody get an opportunity. Uh, there's, there's enough there's enough time for everybody to, to be tested. But let's talk about Peter. I mean, 157 of 258 balls. Um, yeah, excellent performance from him. And also Tony Dezorzi, really putting up his hand. South Africa has been calling for a black African batter for a long time to put up their hand, especially from an international perspective and from an SAA standpoint. And Tony Rizzozzi is doing exactly that. He's going to cause, if he can continue doing this and he can continue pushing on and keeping his form up, because after he struggled at the beginning of the season, but once he got that 100, um, it changed everything for him, uh, for, for the VP Blitz. And, and I think he's keeping that form going now. I think he's found his groove. But the major talking point of the year for me is Jason Smith, because I feel that his performance... And we're going to have to see how he performs with the ball as well, because that's going to determine where he stands in a South African standpoint. Because I've always thought that he could be a guy that could fill up a, a really big hole in the South African lineup, because we've been looking for that batting all rounder that can bat at five and bowl, or bat at six and bowl, you know, not only bat at seven and bowl. Like currently, Vian Mulder is, is supposed to be that guy for South Africa, but he hasn't really shown it with a bat. And if Jason Smith can keep this consistency going, because he scored a ton already in the season, he scored a half century already this season, he's, he's doing excellent, he's one of the top scorers for the Dolphins this season. So if he can continue that form, plus show it in this SAA matches, it's, it's really going to cause some problems, but good headaches for South Africa in the future. So overall, what is your thought processes of SAA, Aditya? And then Werner, you can follow on straight from Aditya. Yeah, I think in trolling contest today, right, between uh, two young teams, both teams trying to gain experience in uh, long-form cricket and red over cricket, and all credit to South Africa. You know, after two early wickets where uh, where one opener and your number three scores zero, you're on the back foot, and then you go on to make uh, 343 in a day. That's outstanding. And... Uh, Special credit to Peter Milan. Over the over the last couple of months, possibly over the last year, we've been talking about um, the lack of big runs, the lack of big hundreds from from South Africa. And sure, it's it's a flat pitch, but you still got to make the runs. So credit to Peter Milan. I thought he did fantastically well, and um, it's an indication of the value of experience, isn't it? Uh, you need to have players who understand their games, and um, I think Peter Milan just showed that. It's fantastic. Uh, with respect to the Indian bowlers, uh, Arzan Nagwaswala, Umran, Umran Malik, Navdeep Saini. Uh, I think Navdeep Saini is probably the most experienced of the lot of the fast bowlers uh, because he's he's had uh, he's had he's played IPL cricket and he's had some taste of international cricket. Uh, but you know, I think overall it's good exposure for them too. You know, they made they made the most of. Uh, the early the early hour you know that first hour they made the most of it when they possibly could have gotten a wicket but then i think if there's a weak link in this bowling lineup it's the lack of experience and uh, the predictability factor you know you need variety on these sorts of wickets and you need experience but obviously this is that avenue for them to get experience so either way i think it's a win-win for both india will be deflated by the end of this day but uh, it's a great learning experience Ferner, we both a big fan of Reinhard van Donder, and we've spoken a lot about him and, and mentality-wise, and, and and his future and what he what he is capable of. This is almost the the season that he can really step up. I feel this was supposed to be the season that he shows everybody. Look, yeah, I can come straight into the Proteus lineup. Not let's not doubt my my ability, but it hasn't gone f the way he'd like it to go this season so far. He hasn't really kicked on much. And in this particular game as well, and we, we shouldn't we shouldn't um, criticize too early because I think there's still a lot of time for him to prove himself in this particular series. But um, 
ultimately, are you, should we be worried about Renner right now? I think, I feel, because currently I feel he just needs, maybe needs an arm around him and just to get his uh, his mentality, his, his mental state clear and so that he can refocus and, and perform like he was doing last season. Oh, can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Weird. Okay. No, um, I, I agree. I don't think we should jump too early um, on it. He's, he only had three innings um, at the Knights. One of them, he was not out because they were also playing at Bloom. And then I think the one, yeah, he didn't play the one in Durban because he was already with the, the SAA side. So obviously, Bloom, we know, like we saw in this game again, how flat it is. You barely, it's rarely that you bat two innings. Mostly it's one side bats, one long innings, and another side bats, one long innings, and then maybe a, a third innings comes in. But it, it's it's really not a result oriented um, pitch. And as, as far as Fantonder goes, he's only had the three innings and then he's had this game. Now he got a, he got a quite quite a good ball. It, it swung in quite a bit. Um, obviously, you'll definitely feel he missed out, especially then sitting there watching Peter and and Tony go ahead and score a 200 run partnership. And then Peter and um, Jason scoring a 100 run partnership, not unbeaten. So you'll definitely feel he miss out big time in that first innings. But he, he still has plenty of time in this series. Um, hopefully, we will see a second second innings from them and he'll get this opportunity there. And then, obviously, luckily, it's not a one off match. He, there's still two two games to come. And I hope they play him in both. Um, I, I figure that they probably will. Um, we yeah. don't have that many batsmen replacement um, in the squad, and it's only a squad of like 14. Why is it 15? I think it's like a squad of 14. So it's not like there will be a lot of people swapping in, just somebody maybe like uh, Michal Bertori is coming in, and um, Tusami might come in for George Lender, or maybe they'll play two spinners in the next game. So it, yeah. it'll just be regular subs. I, don't th- I think you'll probably get all three games. So I won't be too concerned. Um, as far as the other guys... Great batting today. Um, I think I, I switched on, or, or let, let's say like this, the, the feed came on while when we were about 17 for two, and I was like, okay, great time to, to start showing what, what's going on. And we missed all the action with the new ball, and then we didn't see another wicket for a long time. But obviously great for us. Uh, I think Peter has established himself for a long time now. Uh, he really is a classy batsman. He's done it um, year in, year out in first-class cricket. He had, a, I thought he had a pretty decent series against England when he played mm. for the Proteas. He didn't get an opportunity again um, with Markram coming back, but I feel he could. He was probably a bit hard done by. He didn't do much wrong, um, and he could. He's definitely our next in line if somebody yeah, um, gets gets injured in the top two. Uh, if they decide to go another way, but I, I, I don't see it at this stage. At this stage, that's probably um, his role. Um, if we really struggle to find a model order batsman going forward and it really doesn't work, maybe they bring in Malan either at number three or make him open as Markham if he wants to bat to number three. I don't know. But at this stage, he's probably just a backup. Um, but a great backup to have, of course. It's it's always good to have that competition within a, a greater squad, uh, making sure everybody keeps on their toes. And great to see Tony um, Desorzi putting in a big um, innings today. Um, he's been very good all season. I think the last couple of seasons, he's really stepped up his Red Bull game. Um, and it's been good to see. And I think that he he will probably be the one keeping Bavuma on his toes in the test, in the test squad. Because we've, we've um, talked about for a while that Bavuma hasn't really done enough in the test squad to really stamp his authority. Um, he, he has helped us out a lot in games. We've been in trouble with Quinny, but... He hasn't really converted um, innings into big scores, the big scores that we, we need at this level. So I think Tony might keep him on his toes, which is also a good thing. It'll make sure that Bavuma knows he has to step up, keep keep performing. Um, somebody like Keegan Peterson also, but he'll, he'll get his chance to to play a few games. Um, it's still too early to, to say, so hopefully he'll come good as well. And obviously then Reynolds for Thunder, We'll want to keep him on his toes again. So you'll want a good series now to make sure that Tegan Peterson knows he has to start um, hitting the ground running quickly at the Proteus. So yeah, mm-hmm. no, overall overall good day. Um, I won't read too much into it. It is a really flat deck at, at Bloemfontein. There hardly is anything in for the bowlers, um, especially the first 
two days. Maybe coming late third day, maybe fourth day, maybe there will be something for the spinners. But generally, it's like we said before, and as well, it's, it's, it's really so good for the batsmen. So I think that the big challenge will be when we come out to bowl, um, when India come out to bat. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm just thinking about Prithvi Shaw coming out to bat on a flat deck <laughs> with as much time as he wants to bat. Yeah. It, it, it it frightens me a bit so <laughs> hopefully we'll get him early but but uh, yeah so the real challenge on this speech will definitely be um, on the bowling front mm -hmm. and you know like i've always been of one of the guys that thinks that you know you must play youngsters in these games etc but when i really analyze it and think about it when you look at the guys that are replacing who and who's who's up for which parts are up for grabs etc and you look at all of those things I think they picked youngsters in the correct positions. And what I like about this is that if there are senior guys in, within the SIA camp, like, like there is in this particular match, a guy like Rainer van Tondo who doesn't score runs has a senior guy to look at and say, okay, well, how did he do it? What did he do right that I didn't do right? How did he approach this like that I in a way that I didn't? And... On top of it, the probability of having a, a more experienced guy in the side that has played test cricket before means that the probability of him scoring runs is higher. So the you if for example, if they had to pick a younger youngster and they were 14 for three instead of you know 14 for two because of a collapse, because of the youngsters not being able to to open up and, and play well, then there's no point of reference for these guys. There's, there's no point of difference for these youngsters to learn from, whereas today they are, there is. Like Peter Milan is, as the captain, is standing there at the wicket and showing everybody how they can approach their game and how they can play on this wicket. So ultimately the same for all three games. They, you can, they, they can come, obviously learn from it and, and move on because I think it's a lot different when, you, when you're playing against guys that are not from the same country. Of course, they, they approach things differently. But it might also be, you know, you get yourself out sometimes as well. You know, there's, there's various ways of getting out in, in cricket, which is what makes it such an amazing sport. But Aditya, let's talk about your, your your bowlers, because I think this is actually the ideal situation for both. Because I think you will be more familiar probably with your batters in your lineup than your bowlers, I feel, maybe. And um, when you're looking at the India bowlers and particularly the seamers coming to a place like South Africa where the decks are flat like this, it gives them a hell of a lot to to process. I think this is probably the best situation currently. South Africa needs to test batters because the batting in the in the in the main team is is a little bit wobbly, and we need to find our next best in line batters that can knock on the door and put pressure on the guys that are in the in the first team. And the same with you guys. I feel that your bowlers are the guys that really need to to step up and and to know that you have next in line bowlers to replace the likes of Boomerah and Shami in the future, it, it gives you a little bit of hope, doesn't it? So talk to me about your bowlers. I specifically want to know about um, Umran Malik uh, specifically because I've heard a lot about him or a lot of people speak about him. I see him a lot of people are also talking about him. Uh, right, so Umran Malik is is quite new to to um, to the India A scene and um, he hasn't played a whole lot of um, first class cricket in fact he hasn't played any first class cricket at all this is his first exposure to it um, yeah. but i think he's been he's been observed in he's been observed by franchises and he's been on the radar of um, the nca because he's one of those guys who can clock 150 and above he bowled the fastest ball of the ipl um, earlier in earlier last month uh so he he is a prospect i think anyone who can clock those kinds of speeds will be uh, attractive propositions in in the test arena specifically navdeep saini is another such bowler he can bowl he can clock 152 he is supremely fit and athletic uh and he's had IPL exposure. He's played a couple of seasons in the IPL. He's also been around the India setup also. Uh, he went with the team to Australia. And um, I personally see a very bright future for him. Where Navdeep Saini has probably lost it a bit is that, he's, is that he became too predictable. 
you know, he needed to add um, a little bit of spice to his to his game. And um, I think the India A Tour. Look, I think one thing that that I feel about these A Tours is that it's more about what an individual can get out of that tour, as opposed to the age of the individual or getting giving an individual exposure. I think it's about what you can get out of it. So Prithvi Shaw, for example, he's made a century on Test debut. He can be playing with the Test team if he wants to. But the India A Tour is probably a lot more valuable for him because he has had some technical deficiencies. So similarly with, with Navdeep Saini, I think this is an opportunity for him to, uh, to really polish his skills and become that lethal red ball bowler that we know he can be. Uh, so this is a great opportunity. And you play in a flat pitch where there's nothing on offer for bowlers. Great opportunity. We also have two spinners in Rahul Jahar and uh, Krishnapa Gautam. Krishnapa Gautam is is an all rounder, uh, and he was uh, he played with the Chennai Super Kings in the IPL. This for Tamil Nadu, I believe. And Rahul Jahar is a well known name with the Mumbai Indians, um, and he's obviously uh, trying to establish himself in Red Bull cricket as well. So. Let's see how it goes. Hopefully, as, as Werner says, in the next couple of days, if there's anything for the spinners, we'll see these two thrive. Yeah, very, very brave from me, say, for, from India eh, to, to play someone like Umran Malik, for example. I mean, I, I look at one list day match and 80 20s on his, on his belt. So the scouting system in India must be insane because they must be watching. Maybe he probably plays, is a club cricket in India? He's probably playing, is that way? Up until. He was he was a net bowler for uh, the Sunrisers Hyderabad in the second leg of the IPL. And because of a couple of injuries, he was drafted in into the first team and <laughs> he started playing. So I think he played one or two games in the IPL in the second leg, and from there, he was then recruited to be a net bowler for for the World Cup. So he was with the Indian team then, and now he's made it on uh, the A tour to South Africa. So I think one of the advantages of um, the sort of system that India has got is that things move quickly. You know, fortunes can change, and uh, you just have to be prepared for it. So hopefully, mm. uh, you know, Umran Malik can make the most out of, out of this experience because he's definitely going to play for India somewhere. Mm, that's, that's excellent, actually. I, I think I think that's an amazing story. Uh, Aditya, if you could get like a interview from me in the future, maybe don't, maybe don't 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 confirm or deny on here because we don't want to put you under pressure. But if you could uh, try, that would be excellent because I mean I would like to hear his story actually and what what he's gone through. It must have been crazy for him to 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 suddenly be in the IPL and then now playing in India A. It's, it must be an incredible journey. He's twenty two years old, so it's not uh, necessarily a. Uh, overboard youngster and he wasn't bought at the auction he was a net bowler <laughs> you know i want to yeah. emphasize that he was That's a net crazy. bowler he was he was there for he was there to help batters get in get in good form that was his yeah. primary purpose yeah. maybe we need to get you in the in the next day Werner. Uh, maybe uh, you know you are problems. Uh, you are solve can solve all the problems in south africa have with that batting battle order i would you know uh um, I want to talk to you about particularly what we are hoping for from this ISA side, from this ISA tour, from a South African perspective. Because me personally, I would have loved to see if someone performs in year, them get rewarded and play in the test side. But from conversations with the convener and what we've heard from Boucher in the presses as well, it seems like they are set on the test team. And I feel that maybe one of the guys or two of the guys that perform well in this particular SAA will probably be maybe part of the squad for the for the India side, but I don't think they'll walk into the first eleven. Do you think yeah. that that's the right mentality to go with, or should we at this stage in South Africa's rebuild? I'll still call it a, a building phase for in the test arena even, uh, because I, I don't think we've settled on a on, on an eleven that we are happy with as a nation, as a fan base. So what would your approach be if you were a selector or the coach of South Africa? It's a tough one. Um, but I think 
we have just obviously we didn't play enough tests. Uh, let me start there. It's frustrating. Yeah. I want us to play a lot more tests because the last one we played is months back now, and India will come into this test series having played two tests against New Zealand, so they will be a bit very well prepared um, against us. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's a tough one. Uh, we just gave two day debuts basically and when exactly. i say just in our last yeah. test, test series which is a long time back now but we just gave the um, debuts to peterson and, and and kyle um so i can't see them bringing anyone new into the definitely not into the 11 at this stage even if they do perform in this this series uh in this in this um a series um hopefully somebody like the zorzi if he can keep making runs in this series uh, maybe he can he can be like in the greater squad as as a, as a backup in the middle order, um, and then we'll, they'll probably look at the bowlers in the series. I think I think they might be looking at someone like Linton Steeman um, to be a back, one of our backup bowlers because we we know we have Andre Khan, we have KG, and we have Lungi. But if we have injuries in those three, then we have to have someone in backup. Whether it is Clinton, whether it is Lutu, Supamla. Um, whoever it is, um, we that's probably what they're looking to get out of this um, series. Yeah. In terms of the batting, I can't see them swapping out anyone. I, I think they'll probably stick with the same, basically the same 11 we had um, in the West Indies, um, barring um, Bavuma coming back because he was injured in that test series. So he'll probably come back and Verena will probably, Verena will probably be in the bigger squad again. I think he probably will have to sit out at first. Um, so we'll see how it goes, but yeah, I can't see us or, or the selectors changing up that eleven right now. They'll probably stick with the same eleven, barring Mavuma, as I said. Um, but yeah, they'll probably stick with those throughout the the India series. I can't see them tinkering with it too much, especially with it being such a big series. I can't see them bringing in anyone new at at the late stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Zoos is going to really put pressure on Bavuma, I feel, in this particular hour. And I personally feel like it's time that Quinton and Bavuma take more responsibility in this team. Like I said it in previous streams, I even think that in Test cricket, that, that Quinty, Quinty needs to find his home with a bat, man. We need him more with a bat than we need him as a keeper. We've got one of the best keepers in the country in on, on the bench, in Calvarena, who is also one of the best batters in domestic cricket. So... It's not like we we housing us a a, a, um, a weak player around there that's just as a backup keeper. He's a bloody good batsman. And we, so, we have Ryan Rickleton as well, also exactly lurking in the exactly. background, having a exactly. great season again. So, yeah. yeah, and then a backup for that is also when Grant Rulofsson comes back from his from his um, recovering from his uh, injury. Sinitembe yeah. Kashile, there's, there's so many we could keep a in the a batters in the country. But my thing is here yeah, is we need to start really thinking about it. If Bavuma doesn't perform in this particular test series, then and they give him another opportunity against New Zealand, I think New Zealand will be then the, the nail in the coffin. If he can't get runs in those two series, then we really strongly need to consider how we're going to change this team. And really, are we going to switch it around? The one thing I was disappointed with is that I would have liked to see a guy like Zubay Ramza in this in this in this squad instead of the ODI squad because unless they really think that Zubay can really become a Proteus ODI player, then because I was always under the impression that Zubay will probably play tests first and then ODIs, and that would have been my my thought and yes that's the way it's probably going to go now because he's going to get his debut probably in the ODIs so he went test and then ODIs but I I would have loved to have him in both you know as that person in the team unfortunately now he's not going to play against India he's going to be playing in the in the ODIs against the Netherlands and we might maybe see him as one of the most important players in the future if he can perform against the Netherlands he's really going to be knocking on the door for that ODI squad for the 2023 World Cup, I feel, because of the, of his form that he's currently in in the white ball arena. His form in the white ball arena has been better than the red ball arena. And I don't know if that has got to do with the fact that he's captain in the red ball arena and not captain in the white ball arena, that that might be a difference in it. 
But I saw him, he showed flashes of brilliance in the, in this match against the Titans and flashes of brilliance he's shown in, in the season. But ultimately, it is what it is, and we have to see the guys that are here. Um, Sinitembe Kashile, hopefully he can come out there in this match and also show what he's capable of. I mean, George Linder doesn't need to practice anything, I feel. George Linder, for me, has proven himself already. Um, but in the, I in think the he just of... wants to play a game. It's been months. Yeah, it's he been hasn't months. played before, since the, the Sri Lanka series where mm. he, he, they, they said he wasn't going to be part of the main squad for the World Cup and he looks at the dejected. He hasn't gotten a game again. So he, mm. And he hasn't played at the Cobras yet um, since coming back. So I think he just is raring to go smash 100 on a flat deck if he can and take 10 wickets do what he can to just shout at the selectors and say wait i'm still here yeah and and it's the perfect situation for him now because two batters haven't performed now so the opportunity now for him to actually go out there and, and, and face some balls is going to be greater so he needs to also show that he can be that guy with the bat he's, he's shown it so many times for the cobras um in the past so yeah let's wait and see guys I think that's enough. We've said what we need to say for this particular episode. Uh, DJ, is there anything else you want to end off with before we go? Well, I hope I hope it um, ends up being a competitive game. And um, if anything, I'm, I'm happy with the sort of attention that this game is getting. And the fact that we're talking about it as much as we are. Because I think in the development of any test team, uh, a, you know, A teams, A, t- uh, a team series, are uh, are so crucial, you know, because they improve the quality of of Test cricket. So I hope India gets what it intends to get out of this. South Africa gets what it intends to get out of this, and uh, hopefully it'll all culminate into uh, an exciting and competitive Test series. One hundred percent. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, please. Click that notification bell for all future videos as well. Um, and get notifications of <laughs> when we go live with every single video. I'm hoping that Werner can come on a lot for this for this particular series because uh, I'm looking forward to having you as well on the show to join me and Aditya more regularly in the future. Um, subscribe, to click, subscribe to Click for Natalie's Magazine as well um that's the link is in the description just click on it. it's 100 free all back issues as well are free so go ahead and do so right away it's a whole different angle a whole different insight from our writers and everybody that are contributing at kick fanatics magazine so please go ahead and do that and support us because that's our basically our backbone also become a patron like Werner has become a patron and join patrons and you can really help us maybe we'll be able to afford if you guys become patrons maybe we'll be able to afford some backdrops here at the back and make my studio look a little bit better because my studio is quite bare with a whiteboard still it's been a whiteboard since the beginning guys so help me move places maybe we can get a little studio in the future that's all in your hands guys so help us out by doing so thanks a lot for watching smash the like button share this with all your friends and family and we'll see you again tomorrow with another daily show take care everybody and enjoy the rest of your evening